this is James from Lone Worn Gamer again, just showing you where I've got to so far with painting up the Death Guard. Thanks to all those people who've watched video one, obviously, which was just the starting point, just showing off the initial base layers and things. What I've done now, obviously, is I've got to the first stage where I've put all the base coats on, and I thought I'd just talk you through what I've done so far. And then obviously, as I progress onto shades, layers, highlights, things like that, I'll update you on each stage. So, at uh, the minute, Obviously we'll go closely around each figure one at a time, so you can see this guy here. Okay, you can see obviously there's a lot of brass and metal colours and green on these armours and things. Plenty of tentacles lurking around on them as well. What I've found is as I've gone around, it's taken me a while to sort of do touch-ups and cover up on mistakes and things. But as I've gone around each model, I've started to uncover more and more little tentacles and bits of bone and things that have been hidden that have not been obvious initially. And I've ended up doing about three or four, sometimes even five sort of little extra base coats here and there. So again, I'm not gonna show all of them in too much detail. Back on the front, obviously the Lord of Contagion. Again, we'll just focus in on him more clearly. So again, you can see there's a lot of detail on this guy here. Both the back and the front have now been done. So he's all set for lots of shades to go on. And again, this guy down here. So looking at the kinds of paints and colours and stuff I've been using. So you can see we've got Death Guard Green. I started with the spray paint and I've used the paint pot to obviously do any touch-ups where I spill over the armour. Balthazar Gold, that's pretty much on things like the armour trim and the tops of pipes, as you can see on this guy here, just to contrast it so you haven't got too much silver. Uh, gun metal or bolt gun metal, it doesn't really matter what colour you're using. This one's the Army Painter one, but you know, the Games Workshop one's just as good. Rakarth Flesh, this has gone pretty much on all the flesh and bone areas, you know, to cover all that. What I've then done is, before moving on, I've done sort of a light overbrush of Ushabti Bone on all, to the, all the bone areas, just to give it that sort of slightly different colour, but obviously trying to keep the Rakarth Flesh underneath in the darker recesses, things like that. Scream of Pink, that's been used for all the tentacles and the eye lenses. Corn Red. Again, nice deep dark red, that's been used particularly well on this guy here. So you can see the paint, the gun straps and the grenade holders. And on this guy here, on the bullet belt underneath the gun. Uh, Mephiston red, it pretty much has only been used here on the, the initial starting point for the plasma coils. So we've gone along XV88. Again, you can use any brown really. I've mostly used it on one guy in particular, this guy here, just to paint the hair on this sort of blight grenade thing on, on the back of his armour. Dryad Bark, that's been used for any sort of holsters or leather bits. Abaddon Black, again we've gone round, so you've got the handle on this guy's axe, the, oh, the areas on the gun that aren't silver, the overcoating. And then Celestra Grey, this has formed the base layer for the smoke on any of the models that have got these sort of weird so I've now also completed the shade stage on top of the base stage and again really what my aim here obviously being death guard being sort of quite disgusting and dirty is to sort of really darken them down a bit and make them look as though you know the armor's not been cleaned in centuries things like that so starting point is that I've used Agrax Earthshade and again you can see that's really sort of darkened lots of the figures down particularly that's gone pretty much over most of the figures themselves that covers the armor, the gold trim, all the silver bits, the bells, uh, all the little play gongs and things, all that sort of stuff. I've even put a second coat once it's dried on things like the swords and the gun metal and those things just to make them a little bit more dirty. And again, hopefully you can see that on the axe this guy's carrying here. So it gives it in that sort of rusty, dirty, filthy look to it again, showing it's not been cleaned. Uh, the second stage, obviously, was to put this on, Seraphim Sepia. And again, this has gone on all the, the bony parts. So on this guy here, you can see it gives it that sort of yellowy, browny tint that makes it stand out a little bit differently to everything else that we've looked at already. Okay, and again, sets it up nicely by having the next shade painted over the top. On top of that, we then went for Bialtal shade colour, and that's this greeny colour here that we've got on the smoke, giving it that sort of toxic effect that you can see and that's sort of similar to what's shown here on the the box where you can see sort of the green toxic smoke coming out of his armor and, and things like that on the picture 
Next we went for Caribou Crimson that was mostly used on things like this guy here on the plasma gun and to paint the tentacles and just give them that sort of wet watery look to them a little bit. Then we came across and we used this. I experimented a little bit differently this time on the other set of these models. I used Reek and Flesh Shade which you can see here. Okay, but this time I decided I'd use this contrast paint, something I haven't really used much of before. It gave it a very similar effect, but again, that's been used on things like the flesh. So again, you can see that here on this guy here, just under his weapon, it's giving it a sort of fleshy colour. And then, just to cap that off, once that was dry, I then used this purple here, the Drucci Violet colour again, to give it a sort of bruised feeling to it as well so that's the shade stage done so I'm going to go on to a bit of dry brushing higher layering and highlighting next and obviously I'll come back on and show you where I've got to with those later and hopefully again you'll start to see the difference that it makes in terms of just making some of the features pop out just a little bit more effectively as we go through.